Today we have with us Mr. Manoj Pandey, who is an esteemed alumnus from the batch 97 and 99, and currently he is working with Cisco as a senior director in AI and ML. It's very nice to have you uh, with us, sir, today. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. So, sir, let's just begin with your journey from Jaipuria Institute as uh, and then you know to senior director at Cisco. Yeah, it's it's, it's a long journey, as you can see, um, more than twenty years. Um, and I think one thing which I'll say is it has gone through many changes over time. Um, I had to adopt, I had to learn new things. Um, when I changed companies, uh, the way each company operates, um, you have to get used to that rhythm. Um, most of my journey has been in technology sector. And as you know, technology is always changing and changing at a fast pace. So it's always important to understand what's happening in each of these technology waves which are happening in the industry. So it is, I must say I was very fortunate um, to work in some of these leading companies in the technology sector, specifically in the data science and ML domain. Okay. So, uh, sir, like uh, how your journey began into this sector, like were you always interested into technology, you know, like since childhood or from your college days or it just started after, uh, after your uh, MBA and then, uh, you know, exploring different fields? Yeah, no, great question. So, during my um, BSc years, when I was going from Christian College of Now, I started learning uh, C++ yes. and then I came to know the power of programming. Like with some few lines of code, you can really build some powerful programs. And that gave me idea that I, I should go into this field. But as you know, in, when we, like in management programs, we don't have a very deep uh, specialization in technology. Right? We do talk about technology, there are interesting subjects. Um, but fortunately, in Jaipur at that time, there was information systems uh, specialization. Uh, so I took that, it exposed me to some of those new areas at that time. Um, and then the story continued, right? Um, at that time, SAS was one of the popular um, programming language for data analytics uh, by SAS Institute. Um, that I used for many years in Dell and also in Infosys. And then the open source era came um, when Python and R programming languages were made available with very powerful packages. Um, so I slowly switched over to R and Python when I was with uh, Microsoft and Johnson and Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I continued the journey, right? You know, as things came and as technology uh, changed from one to another, I, I just kept uh, learning new technologies and making sure that I am able to contribute uh, to the company where I am working. Okay, uh, so uh, like sir, of course this journey of yours would not have been very easy one. You know, you must uh, like, I believe that uh, like, you know, there were some uh, setbacks or some, you know, uh, difficulties you, you have faced in your life and in achieving this position you are at. So like, uh, can you share some of the events or the, uh, you know, difficulties you have faced and how you overcame that and along with that, how Jaipuria uh, has helped you in this journey and helped you in, you know, achieving this. Right. Um, so, in terms of the projects, uh, these are complex projects, right? Um, building a forecasting platform for forecasting millions of products in a day, um, looking at last 20 years of data. That's not a small problem to solve. And then deploy it on a cloud platform. So, yeah, I mean, those are challenging problems to solve. Of course, there's a team which is there work with the team to build the architecture, build the MVP and then go and build out the first version, deploy it to the customer, get the feedback and then go through the whole DevOps process. But from Jaipuria perspective, as I said earlier, the professors, you know, we had great connect with the professors. We were the second batch. The institute was in the, you know, the initial stages, forming stages. Um, 
and the way it has grown organic organically i think those are some of the attributes i have it with me right i want to grow organically right learn one area and go deep into that right? um but i was very shy <laughs> when i was here i had few friends and i still meet them whenever i come um uh, but yeah i think and the journey continues right i still come here i visit here uh, meet professors and friends so um i think it was like a the personality of jaipuria and mine was kind of uh, you know there was a match i would say at that yes. time so as you mentioned like uh, earlier that uh, this uh, like technology today is changing every single minute you know so like this i think is very important for every of our view uh, every uh, every one of our viewers here to you know have this idea that how you are keeping yourself updated about the change in the trend and the technology today so how you are keeping yourself updated with that yeah and again um great question because uh, what wave we have seen in last 5 years or 10 years yes. back when imagenet came and then when you know uh, cnn model rnn models came this wave is very different this wave is kind of not giving you much time to learn because the next one is coming within 6 months within one year so this wave is hard um at individual level at company level um we have to think about where to invest when when a technology matures mm. then a company thinks like okay let's take this technology and start implementing it in, in the company so that it benefits the employees the customers but a technology which is changing and evolving so fast this current wave um, um I don't have a direct answer for that right how do you keep up one thing i do is i still code i still write code in python i do um build some models using reinforcement learning algorithms and so on um i think that is one way of keeping yourself uh, updated um doesn't matter these are not world class solutions but you know keep yourself clo- close to the code will always give you ideas around where we are today where is the technology today yes, right exactly. um the moment you are far from that um then it becomes a bit hard to understand what decisions we should take um and you know what products to buy what services to buy whether whether it will work or not work so it's always always good idea to go back to the basics yes, exactly. you know work with the the engineer on a daily level and understand what's happening there um try to see if you can read more research articles mm-hmm. um try to see if you can still code at this time <laughs> yes with 20 years uh, you know sometimes it's hard but i think that's probably what i try to do right yeah. keep yourself updated on you know what's happening so for example we are in um open ai version 4 4.5 right and now we are probably going to get 5 mm-hmm. in a year or oh, so yes um there are a lot of innovations which has already happened sora right which is not yet released for public because of election reasons in us um so i think just keep an eye of what new technologies are coming which are not going to disrupt one business but the entire industry and maybe create new opportunities right whether it is medicine aerospace education uh, i i think potential is huge so it's, it's always good idea to keep an eye on some of the breakthrough technologies coming in but the pace of innovation is much faster today and that's why catching up is a bit yes. difficult <laughs> yes sir exactly uh so so like uh, what is your advice to the people who are into this sector like technology sector and then who want to get into this sector mm-hmm. so what will be your one advice to them i mean if they are already in this sector this is the best decision they have already taken <laughs> right <laughs> um the technology sector has gone through era of stabilization in last one or two decades many new technologies have come cloud is stable now um you are not seeing a huge amount of new services being launched on cloud except for you know ai services being deployed on cloud but for new people i think irrespective of which domain you are working technology and ai is going to you know touch you 
Yes. Always, right? So just keep an eye that how can you be more productive in your job using AI? Right? I think that's what I would suggest for anyone who is entering the industry. Um, I, and the notion around, hey, this will take away your job. And the, I think there are some concerns around that. But the main focus of all this is how can I use all this technology to be more productive? I think that's how uh, companies look at it. Like how can I make my 50,000 employees more productive, right? How can I make uh, my customer experience process much better, yes. much quicker, right? Uh, so, sir, I believe that, you know, like we all have some lessons or learnings from our alma mater. So I think like, you know, can you share any of your learning which you had, uh, you know, uh, in your college days and you are still, you know, th that learning is still is helping you in overcoming, uh, you know, the problems, uh, uh, you know, you are facing in your life right now. Um, I think the, the key word here is self-learning. Um, I think, as I said, I'm one of the shy persons. I have, I have never attended any extra tuitions or training. I mostly self-learn, right? So I usually buy books. I learn myself. It happened during college days. It happened during MBA days. Um, and the environment actually helps you, right? Especially, as I said earlier, the Jaipuria environment actually helped me learn, you know. Um, and, and so that gives you confidence that, okay, can I take up a complex topic? Um, take some time to go through the material and learn it myself. Mm -hmm. If I can do it, imagine the kind of confidence I'm going to get. Yeah. Right? So, and that's exactly what is needed. And mm -hmm. I think that that is the model I've adopted for last all these years. Right? And I think that came from, that is how my personality was. And that's how this environment helped me um, you know, do it. Can you suggest or can you advise something to our students who are, uh, you know, who are just getting started with their corporate journey? So um, I'll say two things. One is whenever I meet young students at Jaipuria and other places, I try to learn from them. Actually, that's that's my motivation to see, you know, how the young generation. I'm still young, but I, I'm talking about the <laughs> next young generation is looking at uh, learning uh, and then looking at their career and then how are they looking at their life, right? All of them. So I, I'm very interested to see their perspective. But the second part to this is um, always go with a good amount of uh, work which you can do on your own, right? Um, never go with this assumption that I am new or I am a fresher, right? So always go with some work which you have done. There's always some work out there which you can somehow find and do it and add it to your profile and you can talk about it, right? So always go with that mindset. That's the only, um, a small advice I can give there. But otherwise the young generation is always full of energy and life and a lot of aspirations. So I'm very happy to see that. <laughs>